Sounds like thunder, you think it's gonna storm? Well, I mean, it thundered and it was a lot closer earlier than this, so it may storm, I don't know. I we like had, had some rain and some storms, but we wanted to get on here and give you a quick update about our grandma. If you've been on the channel and you've been following along, you know she's not doing all that great, that she's got cancer. And we just wanted to give an update, keep everyone informed, because everyone uh, has been letting us know they're praying and sending cards and and everything and we just really appreciate that so we just want to give you an update and let you know how things are going um it's been a tough day <laughs> if i'm being honest but we you know have called hospice and we have them kind of um as care and we're so incredibly grateful for them oh my gosh these people that we've seen in just the last two days have been just wonderful kind godsend people and I'm extremely grateful for them. And oh my gosh, for anyone who does hospice, wow. I just don't, I can't imagine like the strength of a person to do that. Because there's just no way. So yeah, I definitely have had a uh, hospice call. And things have just moved like incredibly fast, I would say. And uh, so it's just tough. And uh, she... The pain is being managed, I would say, um, pretty well now because with the hospice people that allowed us to kind of upgrade, so to speak, as far as pain medication goes, which is great. Uh, you know, this is the time to kind of pull out all the stops, so to speak, to not be in pain. And so I'm very glad for that. The medicine's working way better. Uh, I think it's helping her sleep more, which I think is also good because uh, that means that she's not hurting if she's asleep. I think it makes her more relaxed. So all of those things are good, but you know, it's just tough because it's just going like lightning fast. It's just hard to believe that literally less than a week ago, she was here. I mean, at um, mom and dad's house and now she can like really not even get out of the bed. It's just went just incredibly fast. So. Um, you know, I mean, thinking of something to add to that. I mean, of course, I don't have a, a whole lot to add in terms of what's going on. Um, but I've heard from a lot of other people, and I know I've said this before, that lung cancer, this type of cancer, and I'm sure there's other kind, I mean, other types too, it's just fast. It's just wicked fast. And I mean, it just really doesn't seem like that long ago that we got the diagnosis. And then to just you know, it's, I think that's the hardest thing is to watch somebody just lose everything, you know, lose their ability to do anything. And, and, you know, it's not that you don't want to care for them. Of course you want to care for them. You love them. You're, you're glad that you can care for them, but you feel bad for people who, and other diseases do you that way. You just lose all your abilities and it's, it's sad and it hurts your feelings and it breaks your heart seeing that. And the truth is, uh, that's coming to all of us in some form or another. It doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. It may happen to a loved one. But that helplessness and uh, sickness in end of life is uh, a fact of life that we're all going to face. And, and I'm sure lots of you have already faced. Um, and it just makes you think. It really makes you think like, wow, uh, you know, I really want to make sure I get my life right. I really want to make sure I live every day. I really, really want to think about my you know living my life with purposeful intent because this is really serious you know and this can happen anytime to anybody and sometimes people don't this doesn't need, it's not even this much time sometimes it's tragic accident you hear one second and gone the next so yeah. i just have been thinking about that a lot through this whole thing of how you live your life and how you should be living your life and and there's just only one way to live it and that's the only thing that makes me feel better about any of this is knowing that, that, you know, goodbye isn't goodbye. It's just temporary. It's just a temporary, like, see you on the flip side sort of thing. And so, I mean, I, if I was being honest, I just don't think, I don't think she has a whole lot longer left. Um, and and for her sake, you know, for someone's sake who's sick and, and in pain, even though, like I said, I think the pain is being managed, uh... I'd way rather her be with be with God than be here and have to live a life like this and I'm sure other people would sympathize with that. Yeah, sure. 
and it's we were talking about this today it's like it's been going so fast and we know that but one of the hospice nurses today and oh my gosh she was so precious this woman was just so strong and so nice you know me and mom were just kind of asking basically like we just don't even know like what we're doing here like what what do we expect and and of course there's just lots of other things that we were talking about and as far as care goes and uh you know she just said based on the way things were going you know maybe three or four days maybe 10 days you know we knew it was moving this fast but and it's hard you know for someone to tell you that <laughs> it is hard it's tough but it's kind of like we were talking about this morning you just have to remind yourself of the positive things that she's not going to be hurting anymore that we know she's going to a better place like you said it's not goodbye we are going to see her again and uh and we have seen god's hand throughout this whole thing i mean so many kind people saying they're praying and sending cards and all of that it means so much to us and even though it has went fast, that's such a blessing in a lot of ways because some people have to suffer for uh, years. No, it's awful. You know, this has only been really since we got this diagnosis since the end of April, and some people have to suffer for months and years. And you know, so I'm I'm really grateful that it's it's not that that if this you know this is the thing that's not going to get better, and we know that, so it'd be better to just head on out quick than to have to. To, to linger on yeah. I was going to show you Corey And I just didn't Because um, as soon as I, Corey was over uh, Over at Miss Cindy's house Where we were all over there <coughs> And I came back To try to start supper And we are going to Get it cooked And feed Feed us Austin and us And then take some to mom And um, While we were over there My cousin has a Field over there close to rush right above miss dindy's house and we were walking in it and so we were just walking around out there and it, it the field was pretty and it's funny i've drove past that field my whole entire life and i've never set foot in it because <laughs> it's never had a reason to go over there but we were over there and they've actually been doing um some work he's been uh clearing some stuff and no brush down next to the creek in the field because he's going to put a greenhouse there and uh, have some plants which is interesting so we were over there and and we heard a hawk and we know we've seen them in a, in a dead snag over there. You can see the tree from the road. And a lot of the times they're on that snag. But it was cool to see that tree kind of up close. up close. And Corey found a little white toughy feather that I think was, would be like a, a body feather up close, you know, to the hawk's body. And it was kind of striped. So that's what makes me think it was a hawk feather. So anyway, we did that. And then I come home to start supper. And Corey said she'd come home behind me. And she soon, pretty shortly thereafter got here. But I went to the mailbox and I was going to check the mail. And I got a letter. And Miss Cindy is just not in the shape right now to open these or probably read them. But and we can read them to her. Right, but we can read them. And so uh, we've been opening them and showing them to her and everything. And uh, I got a letter from Sue. Sue's been so sweet. Sue, you've been so good to us. You've sent so many sweet cards and sent me cards and did so many nice things and I opened that card I just thought well I'm just gonna open it and I opened it right there at the mailbox I just didn't even drive home and um it's funny that me and Corey had already been talking about this earlier and that she found that feather and we were talking about Psalms 91 what that verse is and that's what was in that card wow. and you just I just don't know what that means, though. Um, because it's just funny that we were already talking about that. And that I was just flipping through my Bible looking for something to read for comfort. And that just... And I know that verse. You know, a lot of people know it. And it's just almost like I wasn't even turning the pages. That God was turning the pages and wanted me to read it. And so... And this was like last week or something. And I was telling Corey this morning why she was here when we were eating breakfast. And I was like... I feel like that verse has been coming up. I saw it on a on a road sign. I saw it, you know, and I was literally just talking about that. And if you read the verse, it talks about, it says it mentions feathers, about feathered wings, about God wrapping you up in, in his feathered wings. And then I'm like, right before that, we were, we found a feather, a toughy little feather. And then I opened that card in there, and that was, and I just, 
I don't know if the neighbor saw me, but I just <laughs> sat there and just, uh, it was, it was big, heaving, ugly crying, but that's, that's just what this means to us. You guys have done so many nice things and said so many nice things and we can feel the prayers and I, and Absolutely. I, I can feel them and that just meant so much to me because I felt like that was, I mean, there's no way that Sue could have known that. And there's no way that she could have, that could have been timed better. She just sent that letter in the mail and I got it the same day that I had been talking about that. And, and we've never set, I've never set foot in that field before ever. So it's just random to want to go over there yeah. and, and all that to line up. And I just know that that was God's way of saying, Hey, you don't forget who's in control. You don't forget that you're not going through this alone. You, exactly. you need to keep your eyes upward. That's what you need to be doing. And so, absolutely. I have to show you the card because it's really yeah. pretty. I would absolutely love to see that. Thank you for telling me. Yeah, that's that's the main thing through this is just that we know God's with us and we can feel Him and and it's tough, but but we can see Him and we know He's here and and uh, and it's like you said, you know, it's not gonna be goodbye. No, and I we've talked about this before, you know making these videos and just being honest and transparent yeah. and, and i know a lot of people would be like you two are just pitiful and you're just crying and why are you going to make this video I know, but yeah. it's because this is real it's and real this life. is real life <laughs> and, and i'm not going to stand here and lie and i'm not going to act like it's i feel okay about it when i don't feel okay about it i want other people to understand above all that you ain't alone and that more importantly somebody loves you and he cares about you no and he's what. no matter what and he's watching you because if i think how much i love miss cindy and how much i don't want to lose her well that pales in comparison how much god loves to her. how much god loves her and how much god exactly. loves you even if you don't know god how yeah. much he still loves you and and absolutely. wants to know you and absolutely and wants to have a relationship with you and i think that that's the most important thing that we could do with these videos is just being honest and 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 say this is what's going on in my life and this is what you know i've got you know to carry and um and i believe in god and i and i'd like to help you believe in god if you don't i'd like to help you i'd like to pray for you yeah. i'd just like to be in fellowship with you because that's that's nobody miss into yourself has said before she says nobody gets out alive but it matters about what you do while you are on this planet Absolutely. And you might as well reach out and, and bond together in exactly. Christ as much as you can, because why not? You exactly. know? Exactly. Exactly. And that's just a huge thing that we're focusing on and her saying you can't, nobody gets out alive. And that's true. And that's been a huge dose of reality in this. You know, of course, we know other people who have passed and, you know, our grandpa passed back in 16, 2016, and we were really close to him. And, but this has been a a huge dose of reality and just how fragile life can be you know but i'm also so thankful that she's 76 and the selfish part of me thinks oh she could live 10 more years at least and yeah maybe that's true but you know there was peace in that that she's 76 years old she's not like the little four-year-old boy who died no we in our community. In community you know so there's peace in that but also Kinda of was thinking today. I think we better wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have sob to. party here. But I was thinking today, like what you said about her saying, "No one gets out alive." The only way you can get to heaven is to die. You know that sounds real, like duh, Corey, and that's true. But if you really think about it, that's it. That's the only way. You got to get rid of this old body, and you know, and and get your next one. That's the only way. So for so her, this way. is not the end. It's just the beginning. It's that's it. It's not. It is just the beginning. This has just been a flash, especially in, in God's time. It's just a right, flash. But a vapor. Yeah. yeah, but a vapor, a flash in the pan, and that's it. I mean, that's the transition. That's the journey. You have to ditch what was here to be with Jesus. To get what's better. And yeah. uh, what he's got is, is so much better so than much this. Better. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. And so there's so much peace knowing. I, w I wouldn't say that she's necessarily suffered really 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 bad but there's definitely been suffering she she's she's had pain but praise god that this medicine that we have now is better and i don't think she's scared but i think that she i think she's confused i think she's confused what we would call confused but i think that i think she thinks that she knows kind of everything that's going on and, and she, she doesn't I think she does but i don't think it's in a bad way i think she's peaceful i think she's comfortable i think i believe uh, that too 
I before, believe all that. Before I, I left today, I just went back in there and I was talking to her. And me and Cora were both talking to her. And I just like to announce myself when I come into the room. She I, she knows who I am. Oh, but yeah. I like to just say, you know, it's just me. I'm just checking on you if her eyes are closed or anything. And I said, me and we both walked in, and I said, it's just me and Corey, it, old Pete and, and repeat. And she smiled so she big that was funny. and laughed, and I hadn't seen her do that in a while. She did think that that was funny. And um, she thinks it's bedtime a lot of the time, so this was really funny. She's like, okay, I'm going to bed. Take care. <laughs> and that was <laughs> her. Saying, she told out. me that. She was like, take care. And then she just rolled her head, and that was her way of saying no quiet in the house girls yeah. i don't and she said that she's like it's bedtime stop being rowdy stop making noise which is so fu it is you know even in in the midst of all of this there's still little moments like it, it was just she wasn't trying to be funny but it was funny and comic relief. it was comic relief and it was funny too because she has a tw this cat that's 20 years old and, and he's, he's just actually 20 years old he is that's 20 and he, they're, he's pretty much in the same shape she's in. He's pretty feeble and pretty elderly, and, and I really wouldn't think he might not have a whole lot of time left. But she's really funny. She's like, his name's Yoda, and she says, Yoda thinks that he's the boss. <laughs> he likes to think that he's the boss, but he's not. He, he tried to be the boss, but he couldn't. <laughs> and it's just so funny because yeah. she... You know, she, it is common relief. So there's little, that's, you know, with, with Christ, even in the mi middle of, of the worst thing that you've ever been through, there's still moments of funniness and happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. And that letter that Sue sent me and that cute little toughy feather that we found. I mean, there's still joy. And we meant to give this to mom. I forgot. This is a part of a magnolia leaf, but it's like a heart. It is. It's tiny. Magnolia leaves are big. They are. I guess it broke off, but we'll get off here. But please comment below, as we've said on, on a lot of these videos, and let us know things that we can pray for you on. We've got a lot of comments about that, and, and we really appreciate that. We want not just for you to be praying for us, but we want to pray for you. And, and we know there's some people out there, you know, I've been corresponding with who their family's sick, who they've just got diagnosed with cancer and all of these things. And, you know, you're not alone. We can mm. go through this together. We'd love to lift you up in prayer. We appreciate each and every one of you. I guess we'll get off here and uh, we'll keep you updated. Let you know what's going on. But we really appreciate each and every one of you. We love you all. We do. We love you. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Can't be. Bye. Come here, buddy. Poor buddy. Pitiful. Yeah. We're both pitiful. Yeah.